Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm with a special guest, and his name is Jason. Welcome to hey. my channel, Jason. Hey, thank sir, you for being for here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Glad to be. So, <laughs> so I saw a comment on TikTok, and Jason was uh, thanking me for making a video about uh, Thai lessons. And I checked out his TikTok, and I found that he uh, he's a he's vegan. So I was wondering, um, you know, I was want to know more about vegan in Thailand and how he has become vegan. If it's difficult for him to to be vegan here, so it would be nice to have him on my channel and talk about it today. So can you actually tell us about yourself a little bit, like what brought you to Thailand? Yeah. So I uh, I remember when I was going through university, I was always thinking that as soon as I graduated, I would go and like live abroad, live different places around the world. Mm -hmm. And I, the, when I graduated, I got my bachelor's, I went to Hawaii for the first uh, winter. And then mm -hmm. I kept hearing good things about Thailand. So I thought I'd go to Thailand the next winter. And then I just sort of fell in love with it. And I've been coming, like I've spent a lot of time, a lot of time in Thailand over the past five years. First, I was teaching English in a school, in a high school. And, um, and now I do work online and stuff like that. But um, mm. yeah, that's how I first came to Thailand. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty awesome country. Okay. So you're from Canada, right? Yeah, so I'm from Canada. Um, and I do a lot of vegan advocacy. So I make a lot of content about veganism. I also do triathlons, so swim, bike, and run races and make a lot of content oh, wow. about that. And yeah, nice. just try to encourage people to be vegan and to live a healthy lifestyle and uh and stuff like that so you were actually vegan before even before you came here right that's right yeah Was i it... went vegan in oh, 2010 okay. so in comparison with like being vegan in in canada what was it like to be vegan here when you like first came here I remember when I first came to Thailand, I, I wanted to figure out how to say vegan in, in Thai. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and, and I mean, it's not, it doesn't exactly mean vegan, but they, they have Ahan J, right? Like oh, yeah, Ahan J. all these restaurants that is basically vegan. Like sometimes they'll have egg or something like that, but usually it's vegan. So, mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was kind of funny. Cause like my nickname is J, right? J Jason. So oh, that's yeah. really easy, easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was really convenient because a lot of it, it was just a way to sort of express the kind of food that I mm. wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can always see like the little, the little symbol, the J symbol on a oh, lot yeah, of the yeah. food, like in, in the 7-Elevens or wherever. And that's just a good way to know that something is vegan. You know, in, when I first came to Thailand, I went to Chiang Mai and Chiang Mai has like tons of vegan and vegetarian restaurants. So that was really really easy and I eat a lot of fruit too so there's the fruit is a lot better here in Thailand than it is in Canada um, mm. and where at least where I live in Canada or like the town that I'm from there's not really any vegan food there so it was actually a lot easier I think to find vegan food in uh, in Thailand and the food is a lot cheaper too like if you go out to eat in a vegan restaurant in in Canada it's going to be a lot more expensive um, oh, really? so I would be I'd be oh. yeah so I would be cooking a lot more at home but in mm. Thailand, it's really affordable to eat out. So it's, it's super easy. Oh, okay. Why do you become vegan in the first place? So when I was, when I was 14, actually, I, I, I was really into punk rock music. And I, uh -huh. I looked at, at the, the liner notes in a CD that I was really into at the time. And the mm. band wrote about all of the things that happened to animals for food. And I just mm -hmm. remember reading that and it really like had such an impact on me that that night when I went out for dinner, you know, I, I sort of mm -hmm. forgot about it after I read it. And then I ordered some meat at a restaurant. And then when the meat came out, I didn't even see it as food anymore. Like, I couldn't eat it because it just, it, to me, it was just like dead animal flesh. And I just, it wasn't ah. I didn't see it as food. And, it, and so I actually, from then on, I went, I went vegetarian for like about eight mm -hmm. months because it just okay. didn't seem like food. But, but at that time, you know, I didn't know anybody who was vegetarian and, and it started to, you know, everyone's always asking me, you oh, know, why aren't you eating meat? And like, I think a lot of the social pressures really got to me. And then yeah. at one point I was feeling like really just sort of isolated. And, you know, you're, when you're a teenager, you want to fit in and all this. So I just sort of like tried to put it out of my mind and I went back to eating meat for a few years actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then, mm -hmm. um, in my second year of university, I got a, a throat infection and I, and I used to get these throat mm. infections like, 
all the time. Like I would get them once or twice a year. But this time that I got it, I was like, well, normally I go to the doctor and I get antibiotics and they say, just take antibiotics for two weeks and it'll go away. But I'm like, well, why do I keep getting this? Like, there must be a reason. So yeah, I searched on, okay. on Google and then on Google, basically I found all this information about how uh, dairy products cause ear, nose and throat infections in a lot of people. Okay. And then as soon as, as soon as I read that, I remembered all of the kind of ethical reasons that I had before for not eating uh -huh. meat. And I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to be vegan because it makes sense ethically and it also makes sense for my health. So I went, that's when I like became vegan. And then, yeah, I've been vegan ever since then. Do you still miss, uh, crave like meat sometimes? You know, n I never, <laughs> it, like, it just doesn't register as food anymore. Like I, and oh, I think the, long, okay. the longer that I've been vegan, the longer, like the less, uh, like it just, be, it just seems so, it seems like such a you know when i'm when i'm riding on the street i'll see like you know they're, they'll be smoking meat right and there'll be like all oh, this uh -huh. this this big cloud of smoke coming from like a barbecue or something right, right, right. and it'll hit me in the face and it's just like oh like the smell is just it's so it's so bad like it really yeah. it, it does not appeal to me at all and and you know riding around you see the trucks and the trucks and they have all the pigs you know crammed in uh -huh. and the pigs and they have all of their like all of their poo all over them and it's just it's it's disgusting you know and they're they're headed to the slaughterhouse right and you know uh, i yeah, just feel yeah. so bad for them and when um, you make that connection to like mm -hmm. what it actually is i think it's it's pretty hard like you know if if we were to go to dinner right and and you were to huh? order you know meat uh and and then we were to start talking about this like to start talking about the animal and like what what the food actually is <laughs> you know most people don't like that like if i go out to eat with other people like you it's like, it's impolite, right? To bring it up because uh -huh. as soon as people actually think about what it really is, it doesn't appeal as much. Or right, like, right, right. If, or if you, if you were to watch a video of like slaughterhouse footage, right? Yeah, yeah. Immediately oh. after that, do you, do you want to go and eat meat right after seeing that? No, no right? The only no. reason why, the only reason why people are attracted to those foods is because we've like, we've disconnected like there's the food and then there's the animals right there's right, the cute right, farm right. animals and the cute pigs and all that and then there's like the bacon and the but when mm -hmm. you actually connect the two it, it becomes less appealing so i think i'm just so aware of what it actually is that it just it, it doesn't appeal to me but having said uh -huh. that like i still you know burgers like veggie burgers you know like i'll i'll, I'll eat those yeah. things or like um you know there's lots of good vegan cheese and i think that's a reason too it's like there's so many alternatives like why would i miss I, I never miss the actual you know the real versions of the food because there's so many good vegan alternatives too so um yeah no, I never miss. Yeah, never miss for it. me, I'm actually considering becoming, you know, vegan because I have had a lot of health issues, including like digestive problems. And I think meat is like probably the cause, right? The main cause of it. And I feel like uh, I, I don't really like I'm not big on like beef or meat in general. Like I'm more like a carb carbs girl. <laughs> like mm. I love carbs. Like I love pizza, Good. but I'm not sure if I can actually skip cheese. But when you talk about alternatives to, to cheese, then that might yeah. be, you know, an option for me. Um, anyway, just wondering about your energy level, because you said you do triathlon, right? So you must be quite strong. But like, usually people think that becoming vegan cannot really give you the energy that you, your body needs. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this? Yeah, so every, everybody thinks that we need we need meat for protein and we need milk for calcium and, you know, all this stuff, right. To give us yeah. you know, energy and strength. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's funny you say that you're, you like carbohydrates. Well, actually carbohydrates are what really give us <laughs> energy, right? Carbohydrates yeah, are, yeah. are what, you know, that's, that's where we get the glycogen from right. and the glycogen fuels all the cells in our body and mm. carbohydrates come from plants, right? That's, that's where they yeah. come from. So, you know, when I, I remember when I, like before I was vegan, I was really, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of energy. I was like pretty, I don't know. I was, you know, eating lots of like pizza with cheese and greasy, you know, greasy foods and like chicken yeah, and yeah. nuggets and stuff like that. Yeah. And I actually, when I first went vegan, I really focused on like fresh, you know, fruits and vegetables and, and mm. like, I was trying to be like a raw vegan. So like, I, I wasn't even eating a lot of cooked food and, oh, and raw you know, vegan. I, I, that's hard. Even, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's pretty restrictive, and I wouldn't recommend that now. I think that there's, I think there's no reason to be afraid of of cooked, you know, rice and potatoes and stuff like that. There's no reason to be afraid mm. of those foods. But at the yeah. time, I was looking for like the healthiest, you know, diet. And um, mm. some people were saying that, you know, cooked foods were bad. But, but anyways, you know, the, uh, like that, that was the reason that I got into doing fitness really was because when I started eating that way, when I started eating more fruits and vegetables and like eating a cleaner diet with lots of carbohydrates, I, I started feeling like I had more energy and like I felt like I wanted to like go for a run and like my energy levels definitely increased. Mm. Um, but, you know, what happened was because, because I was eating like a restrictive form of a vegan diet where, where I wasn't yeah. allowing myself to eat any, any, um, uh, any cooked foods. And even some people would say that like too much fruit is bad for you because it's too much sugar, which is like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Like fruit's one of the, fruit's like the healthiest food. Like it's the food that is best designed for us. Like if you go out in nature, there's no yeah, yeah. food other than fruit that is like best suited for us. Like even raw mm -hmm. vegetables, like, you know, how, you know how much broccoli you'd have to eat or, you know, like, like vegetables you'd have to eat to get enough calories. Like fruit is like, it mm. looks good. It tastes good. It's, it's really like nature's food for us and it has sugar mm. in it. So there's no reason to be afraid of that. When I first went vegan, I wasn't eating enough. I don't think I was just getting enough calories. So I had energy initially because I, I got all of the junky, you know, animal foods out of my diet, all the like uh. oily fried foods that gave me energy. And I was eating, you know, fresh food that gave me energy, but after a little while, I started to lose energy because I just uh -huh. wasn't getting, I just wasn't getting enough calories. And that's the ah, biggest, that's the biggest issue. Cause some people do go vegan and they, and they say, Oh, I went vegan for like a few weeks, but then I, I had no energy. And then mm. if I have a conversation and I ask them like, well, what were you eating? Like, tell me about what you were eating on a daily. I'd be like, Oh, you know, I would have like a few oranges for breakfast and like a salad for lunch. <laughs> and like, and I'd be like, okay, so you were eating, you know, 500 to like a thousand calories a day. And it's like, no wonder that you had no energy. Right. So, uh -huh. so that's the thing. Like when you go vegan, you just have to make sure that I would recommend using like an app. Like there's lots of apps out there you can use to track your calories and mm. tra use it to make sure you're getting enough or more than you would need. Like, because you have to eat more volume because there's yeah, yeah. less there's less calories in the same volume. Like if you have a plate of fruits and vegetables compared mm -hmm. to a plate of like meat and cheese, you know, there's yeah. it's going to look a lot bigger. Like the plants mm -hmm. will look a lot bigger for the same amount of calories. So you just have to make sure right. that you're, you know, getting enough calories. And yeah, I've found that I found that definitely I don't have any issues with uh with energy levels like i i won the uh i won my age group for the asia pacific ironman 70.3 uh championship last year oh wow so yeah you know I'm, I'm competing against plenty of people who are who are not vegan and i'm and i'm beating them and uh you know i and and i say that like not That's to like impressive. say like, oh i'm so great yeah, but it's, yeah, just, it's just yeah. like it's it's like an objective fact to to show yeah. how i'm how i'm doing and how my energy levels are so that's that's why i bring that up but um and yeah, there's plenty of other athletes who are doing that. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen the documentary, The Game Changers. I think I yeah. heard of it. Yeah, check it out. Because it's all about all these athletes who are, you know, uh, some, okay. some of them are vegan or some of them are plant-based. Like, they're eating mostly plants. So there's a lot of... Uh, so plant-based and vegan are different, right? Plant-based, like, you still eat meat, but you try to focus more on the so, food group of, like, plants. So there's, there's kind of, like... <laughs> the term plant-based like the, the term plant-based right like i think for for a lot of us like for the for many years uh we have defined plant-based as eating 100 percent plants but maybe like somebody who's vegan is against all kinds of animal exploitation so you know mm. buying products that are tested on animals going to zoos you know paying for like other kinds like wearing fur wearing leather like a vegan wouldn't ah, okay. do those things whereas like okay. someone who's eating a plant-based diet eats only plants but they're not necessarily like against you know wearing leather or, ah, or doing, like they're okay. just eating but 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 now some people are using the term plant-based to mean mostly plants but still eating a bit of animal products ah, but okay. I, I i don't like that i i would like to keep the term plant-based as like 100% plants because the thing is like everybody should be eating mostly plants anyways like there's not a doctor well there might be like a few crazy doctors but most uh. doctors would agree that we should be eating mostly plants you know so that that should just be a given so i think the term plant-based you know I, I would like to see it defined as 100 percent plants yeah um just wondering um about how like how has your interaction with thai people been 
it's like when you you know you're being vegan and then you going out with them and hang out with them go to a restaurant is it difficult for you to be vegan when it comes to like socialization with people yeah i think like you know it's it's pretty similar to, it doesn't make too much of a difference whether it's thai people or western people or whatever uh, with yeah. thai people it is definitely the case that you know the way thai people eat like it's sort of like communal eating right so you have all the dishes yeah. in the middle and everybody's sort of taking right so um yeah that can be a little bit you know if i'm eating with non-vegans then it, it sometimes it's a little bit i don't know it, it can get a little bit awkward because people will, will normally say oh you know try this or try that and then i have to say oh like thanks but like i don't eat that and like it sort of depends how I'm feel. It sort of depends how I'm feeling on the day. If I if I want to make it a big discussion or not, like sometimes I'll. But a, a lot of times, because people ask me, right? Like this. Oh, like why? You know, so you don't eat this. Like why not? You know, and it's like okay, like are we going to go into this discussion now while you guys are eating? Like and, and you know, I mean, to be fair, like I, I do try to explain myself and like say my reasons for it. Um, and you know, like I don't want to it's tricky because on the one hand I want to stand mm -hmm. up for the animals and I want, and I want to say what I believe is right and what should be said. But yeah. then on the other hand, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to piss people off too much. So I think there's a yeah. balance there. There's a balance that you have to find of like, you know, I have to speak my truth, but I, I don't want to, I, I don't know. I don't want to like ruin the party for everybody, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tricky one sometimes. Um, but you know, in general people are, people are like pretty understanding and people think it's a good thing. Like people definitely like mm. generally they'll say, Oh, that's great. But like, but I could never do that. Like that's like a common thing, right? Like people will say, Oh yeah, that's awesome that you're doing it. But like, I could never do that. And then I'll sort of say, well, it's actually not that hard. And you know, go into that conversation. So from my personal experience, when I was in Canada, right. And I told people I couldn't eat something. They were just like, leave it at that. They wouldn't ask mm. further, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure like my people, <laughs> Thai people, <laughs> Mm -hmm. They love to know why. And yeah. they would ask you so many questions. Did you get that experience too? They'd be like, why and why and why? And they yeah. keep asking further instead of like yeah. when you say, okay, I imagine if I say to someone like, hey, I'm vegan. And they'd be like, Re respect that. And they'd be like, all right, she cannot eat this, right? Mm -hmm. But if I said it's to like Thai people, okay, because we care so much. Like, we love to know. We want to know. Mm -hmm. That's our culture. We want to mm -hmm. know why. Do you mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable sometimes like to answer that every time or like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I think like, I think like go, going back to when I, when I first went vegetarian, right. When I was a teenager and, mm -hmm. and at that time, like now it's like, I think in what less so in Thailand, but in a lot of Western, you know, countries like veganism is quite like well known now, yeah. like people kind of know what it's about. So that's why maybe if you say, Oh yeah, I'm vegan, I don't eat this in Western countries, they might not ask that much, but in Thai, you know, in Thai circles, like people, maybe it's, it's not so common, right? People don't really know what veganism is. Uh. Um, and so that's why I think they ask, um, perhaps maybe. Um, but yeah, like when I first went vegetarian, it really wasn't very common for people to be vegan or vegetarian. And so uh, I did okay. get, I did get a lot of questions and like, and I found that like, that's, that's what, like, I eventually went back to eating meat for a couple of years because and I think that was a big part of it. Like the social pressure, I didn't always want to be, and I didn't have all the answers back then. I just knew that I didn't want to eat meat, but everybody was asking, you know, why, you know, what, what's your reason? And like, I don't know, like, it just doesn't seem right to me. And so, uh. you know, back w at that point, I think it really was kind of, it was difficult for me to like deal with the social kind of pressure. Um, but mm -hmm. now I think, I think the, the longer you've been vegan, the easier it gets because, you know, I've got an answer for anything. Like if, if anybody wants to talk to me about anything or like ask me questions about nutrients or whatever, like I know my stuff now. So like, I I'm happy to have those conversations. So what you were saying is not so much about intercultural differences in terms of how people approach it or ask you about that, but it's more like when it's not common for them, mm -hmm. then they will ask questions about that. I think right? so. Yeah, I think, okay. I think so. And I okay. think that's what I think that's why like now it's still quite new. Like most people don't like the word, like I have some Thai vegan friends who, who yeah. are, you know, we're trying to sort of make the word vegan, like we again, like actually a word rather than J because it, it's not yeah, really yeah, J, yeah. right? J is like religious. Yeah, so it yeah. is like its own thing, but a lot, but like the, the concept is not really mm -hmm. like in uh, Thai culture. So you sort of have to like explain a bit. Oh, okay. All right, last question. What would be your advice for those who are living in Thailand and maybe want to try, you know, being vegan or already vegan? 
Like how, Mm -hmm. what would be some tips that you would like to give them? Yeah. I mean, you know, I would say that, you know, for, for starters, like the, the main thing that will keep people vegan, I find is, Mm -hmm. um, you know, first, first and foremost, you, you really need to like educate yourself on what's actually happening in animal agriculture, like what the animals are actually going through, like as hard as it is, go and watch a film called Dominion. If you go to dominionmovement.com, there's a film out of Australia uh, that came out, I think it was like a year or two ago. And it really documents like all the things that the animals go through, um, Mm. you know, for, for food or for clothing or experimentation or whatever. Like that, that really is the starting point is to like, as uncomfortable as it is for us to watch that stuff, like just imagine, you know, what the animals are are going through. And, you know, and if we've eaten these foods our whole lives, like that's the least we can do is to actually see what's being done for it to be produced. So, I mean, I say that just as a starting point, because like, once you understand that, once you understand like what's really going on in the food industry, um, it, it, it just, that's, that's like the starting point. Because if you don't understand that and you don't see what's really going on, then like, well, why is it so important to be vegan, right? You don't really understand yeah. what, what the importance is. But once you've understood that and you've seen like what's actually going on, um, you know, yeah, like it's a, it can be inconvenient at times. You know, sometimes you go to a restaurant and there's not that many options. But I would say like there almost always is an option. So the In Thailand, piece- right? Yeah, there, there's almost always an option. Like some, rest, yeah. some restaurants, it can be really hard. Like you might just be eating something really, really boring. Um, like it, say if you go to a, like a really neat, heavy restaurant. But most Thai restaurants, there's lots of options and they can, they can make things uh, vegan. So I would okay. say like the first, the first thing to make it easy is to just like understand what is vegan and like understand how to speak maybe a bit of Thai to like explain what you want yeah. and what you don't want that's probably a really good starting point. Maybe even if you're like, if you're a foreigner, you know, you can write down stuff like you can, I don't know, get a Thai yeah. friend or Google translate and just write down, you know, the ingredients that you don't eat. And then that way you can show it and you can eat at almost any restaurant that way. Um, and then another tip would be like, just eat lots of fruit. Like Thailand has amazing fruit. So, you know, fill up on mm. fruit, enjoy that. Um, find the J, the J restaurants are really good. Or like, if you're looking at products in the supermarket, a lot of times, if you, if you get to know that, you know, that red and yellow J symbol you see on things, that's a really easy way to find stuff. Um, and there's also an app or a a website called happy cow. If you go to happy cow.net, happy cow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's the name, right? That's cute. (laughs) Yeah. The cow, the cows are happy when we're not, uh, when we're not killing them, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a website that, or an app that you can, you can find all of the vegan or like vegan friendly restaurants, um, in your mm-hmm. area. And you can use that all around mm-hmm. the world anywhere. Not like, not just in Thailand. And then that's a good way okay. to find, uh, to find options. And then, um, there's also, uh, there's also a group that, um, a friend of mine has been, you know, putting together, it's a program called challenge 22 mm-hmm. and, if you go to challenge 22, you can sign up and they have, they have Thai people who are basically mentoring people who want to go vegan. So if you sign mm-hmm. up for challenge 22, you can, you get paired with a mentor, you get put in like a group and then you have that mm-hmm. like community support people. You can ask questions to that can give you advice. They'll send you like um, emails that have, you know, recipes and just support and stuff like that. Cause that's, that's really, really important is to have some people, uh, to, that you can talk to who are also vegan and, and that you can, you know, vent to, or, you know, ask questions or whatever, because it can be lonely, especially in Thailand. Like there's not a lot of vegans. So I would really recommend, yeah, signing up to, to that program. It's totally free. It's just a 22 day sort yeah. of program to get, get you started. So that's really, really helpful because so yeah, if, it sucks if you don't have any friends. <laughs> if they want to follow you, your journey, your vegan journey or your, uh, because you post stuff on TikTok and also YouTube, right? About about yep. being vegan and stuff. Um, how can they find you? I'm gonna put it yeah, in the so, description below too. Yeah, so all of on basically all social media, so YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. It's just at Jason Fonger. Uh, Twitter as okay. well. Started doing some tweets and stuff. So yeah, it's just Jason Fonger on uh, on all the social media. So all right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Sort of information. Oh. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, this has been fun. And that's about it, guys. See you guys again next time. Bye, Jason.
Bye-bye. Take it easy.